As we continue in our series refuting the misinformation of counter-missionaries, focusing first on misinformation from counter-missionary Rabbi Tovia Singer, we're going to really uncover some shocking stuff. Uh, you, you have to brace yourself for what's coming. It, it, it was shocking for me as much as I've interacted with counter-missionary material for decades. This was a real shock. We're going to look at it. Again, you be the judge. We're going to separate fact from fiction. The question is the meaning of he shall see seed in Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Is it speaking about Jesus in some metaphorical way since he didn't have a wife or children? Can it not refer to him because the subject of Isaiah 53 will see his own physical offspring? That's the subject. Let's listen to Rabbi Singer. The problem here becomes staggering for the church, once again. Why? Because if you're going to interpret Isaiah 53 as referring to Jesus, well, Yira Zera means you're going to see seed, meaning you're going to have children. And the word Zera doesn't just mean children as a metaphorical children. Zera means seed. It means physical offspring. It does not mean metaphoric children. All right, so we're going to examine that claim in detail about the meaning of zera. Can it have a medical, metaphorical meaning, or does it always mean literal seed, either type of seed you put in the ground, or, as it's used commonly in Scripture, seed, male offspring, future generations. So we're going to look at that and analyze it, but I want to point out something first. And let's look at the verse. We'll put it up in, from Sfaria. Uh, and and you, you'll see halfway through the verse, Yer'er zer, yarich yamim. So this Faria translation, this is New Jewish Publication Society version, that he might see offspring and have long life and that through him the Lord's purpose might prosper. There's a whole lot we can discuss about the, the rest of the verse, but we won't focus on that now, just for clarity's sake and simplicity's sake. The, the phrase Yerezera only occurs here. It's a very unusual phrase, actually. We don't have it anywhere else in the Hebrew Bible. So to say it means he will see offspring, he will see children, but not necessarily. We don't know that it means that because it's the only time it occurs. It is an unusual form. You say, well, shouldn't we just assume that, that it means he'll, he'll have children? Could be, but I just want to make this clear. Anyone telling you Yerazera means that someone will see future generations of their own children is not telling you the truth. They may say, we believe it means this, we think it means this, but you do not know for sure because it is an unusual idiom that is found only here. Prove me wrong. Show me all the other times this is used in the Hebrew Bible to have this particular meaning of see your own physical children. All right, so let's, let's go on then, and let's take a look at how Robert Alter translates this in his magisterial translation of Tanakh. He says, and the Lord desired to crush and make him ill, would he lay down a guilt offering, he would see his seed. So he puts his in, have length of days. Now, now look at what Robert Alter says in the notes to his translation. He is a Jewish translator. He's not Christian. He says the Hebrew is crabbed and the translation conjectural. It is also puzzling that after the servant has been reported dead and buried and a surrogate for Israel's sins, this conditional possibility of a long and happy life should be offered. Could this be a textual intrusion? Oh, maybe there's a point to these Christians saying that this refers to Yeshua and that it means more than just he will have physical children. Because Isaiah has told us, read it for yourself, read the verses leading up to this. Isaiah has told us he will die. He will be buried. He will suffer a violent death. He will be pierced. He will be cut off from the land of the living. He'll go like a lamb to the slaughter and will be buried. How do you live a long life after being buried? It's called resurrection. That's what this passage is telling us. The servant will die and the servant will rise. So what does it mean then, Yerazera? He will see, see. What does it actually mean? Look at the footnote to the New Jewish Publication Society translation. They say emendation yields his arm. In other words, not Zara, but Zaro. That is his vindication. 
And it says, compare verse one with note. And the note there is to the arm of the Lord, which says the vindication, which the arm of the Lord affects. So the new JPS translation is saying, you know, we don't think the original Hebrew said, you're as Zerah, but you're as Zara. Oh, he will see his arm, namely God's arm of vindication. The point I'm making is simply this. The Hebrew is difficult. And to simply say it means that he will have his own children, and it can only mean that, is to mislead you. I want you to have the facts so that you can intelligently look at the text and not be misled by the misinformation. So an argument that's commonly raised is to say, look at Isaiah chapter 57, verse 4. Isaiah 57, verse 4, speaking to Israel, says, you're a seed of falsehood. So it's not a literal seed of falsehood, but speaking of them metaphorically. So the verse says, with whom do you act so familiarly, at whom do you open your mouth and stick out your tongue, why you are children of iniquity, offspring of treachery, Zerah, Sheker. So Christians often argue, no, no, Zerah can be a metaphorical seed. It could just mean disciples or something like that. And here it's used metaphorically in Isaiah chapter 57, verse 4, the King James says, seed of falsehood. But Rabbi, Rabbi Singer takes strong issue with that. Listen to what he says. Well, the King James completely mistranslates it because they put the, they switch around the adjective. Zerah Shekha means false seed, not seed of falsehood. It means false seed. Got it? Ah, so Rabbi Singer says, very important point. Isaiah 57, 4 does not indicate that Zerah has a metaphorical meaning at all. No, no, to the contrary, the King James mistranslates it. The King James says seed of falsehood, whereas it actually means false seed. And he's going to make a big point about that. Back to Rabbi Singer. Tisanogu. Now, this is um, translated variously as who are, are um, uh, whom are you mocking? It doesn't really mean that. The word oneg means to bring pleasure. Oneg means joy. Ami tis anogu, who, who, um, who is this one who is pleasuring? Ami tarchivu pe, who is, it's completely sensual, who is opening their mouth wide open? Tarich loshon, and you stretch out your tongue. Who is this one? Hello, Atem, who are you? Yilde Fesha, that means wicked children, not children wicked, but wicked children. Zera Sheker, a false seed, wicked seed, and producing and doing vile things with their seed. Oh boy. Oh my. Did, did he just say? what I heard him say, that this is some lewd sexual description of some type of sexual act and wasting the seed, and that's why it's false seed. Did, did he actually read this as a lewd sexual verse? Are you kidding me? You know, when I was a boy, my dad told me a story about a prison psychologist who was working with a prisoner who was in there as a sex offender. And the psychologist draws a picture of a circle and shows it to him and says, what do you see? And he says, um, some lewd sexual thing. And the psychologist is shocked. So he draws a picture of a square. What do you see? And then it's some perverse description. The psychologist is shocked. He draws a straight line. What do you see? He gives another perverse description. The psychologist says to him, sir, I want to tell you you have a filthy mind. And the sex offender says, what are you talking about? You're the one showing me the filthy pictures. Uh, the, the idea that you could read Isaiah 57, 4 as some type of lewd sexual description be, because you, you want to argue against a, a Christian argument about Isaiah 53. I, I, listen, there's a lot of shocking, bizarre, crazy, inaccurate stuff in Rabbi Singer's videos. But, but this, this one may take the cake as beyond shocking. Okay, let's, let's look at a, another Jewish translation again. We'll start where we were. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 4. On Sphoria. So we read this, want to read it again. 
with whom do you act so familiarly? Not with whom do you pleasure yourself, as Rabbi Singer is arguing. With whom do you act so familiarly? And at whom do you open your mouth and stick out your tongue? This is not a sexual act. Oh, God, help us. This is not a sexual act. While you were children of iniquity, offspring of treachery. Okay, let's go to the Chabad website. Another, even more traditional Jewish translation there. On whom will you rely to enjoy yourselves? And against whom do you open your mouth wide? Against whom do you stick out your tongue? Are you not children of transgression? See the false. Isn't this interesting? Rabbi Singer said that the King James got this wrong and said seed of falsehood, when it should be false seed. Isn't it interesting? The translation in the Chabad website said seed of falsehood. So you're, you're looking to others. You're trying to get enjoyment and pleasure from others instead of looking to God. And, and you're mocking and opening your mouth and scorning. You're children of iniquity. Seed of falsehood. Here, let's, let's look at this. Uh, let's look at what Rashi says on the Chabad website. On whom you rely to enjoy yourselves? Since you have turned away from following me, on whom would you rely to, to enjoy yourselves with good? Had you merited it, you would then enjoy yourselves with the Lord. But now on whom would you rely to enjoy yourselves? And then against whom do you open your mouth wide when you scorned and mocked his prophets? This is not a sexual description. Wow. I, <laughs> and what about seed of falsehood? that this is allegedly changed by the King James. Let's take a look, all right? The Stone Translation, this is a traditional Jewish translation, renders seed of falsehood. Rabbi Schwab, in his commentary on Isaiah, the seed of falsehood. Samson Raphael Hirsch, seed of falsehood. Shalom Paul, Israeli scholar, offspring of treachery. They all read it the same way. King James didn't change this, it translated it accurately. Now, now here's the whole deal. Rabbi Singer could have avoided all this and given a simple explanation that still would have argued his point. He could have said Isaiah 57, 4 really isn't metaphorical because it says that the children of Israel are a seed of falsehood because they're, they're born of harlotry. They don't have legitimate Israelite pedigree. That's what Shadal says, Rabbi Luzato, famous Italian rabbinic commentator. So he could have given a simple argument like that. It just said that. Instead of coming up with this perverse sexual thing that nobody heard, gosh, where in the world did that come from? He could have just said that, yeah, they thought they were the seed of Israel, but they weren't. They weren't a false seed, but it still refers to literal descendants. I don't need to argue that Isaiah 53.10 is metaphorical. Yerah Zerah is, is metaphorical, that he'll see seed, meaning a metaphorical seed. It could be that, could be disciples, but I don't even need to argue that. It doesn't say he will see his seed. But see, Zara by itself, where else do we have it? We have in the end of Psalm 22, speaking of a future generation, Zara Yavdenu, offspring shall serve him. Yisupar la Adonai la Dor, the Lord's fame shall be proclaimed to the generation. How does the New, Jew, New Jewish Publication Society translation render it? Offspring, Zara. So we could simply understand this to mean Messiah will see future generations of Israel serving God. That's all. It doesn't say his own seed. And it's an unusual idiom, as we said. That's why he's going to die, he's going to rise, and he's going to see future generations of Israel serve God. That's why it doesn't say his seed. Here, let's just look at some translations and understanding of this. The Targum, so Aramaic translation to Isaiah 22:31, says, Zar e de Avraham Yithachun, the seed of Abraham will serve him. In other words, it's, it's not the physical descendant of the psalmist that's being spoken of, but rather this seed that the people of Israel in the future. And that's all Isaiah 53 could be speaking of. Here, let's look at, at what Rashi has to say. The seed that worships him, the seed of Israel, who constantly worship him. So there you have it again. The seed of Israel. Targum says it. Rashi says it. It's talking about future generations of Israel. Here, let's, let's look at another. Ibn Ezra. Zerah, and, and he, he goes on, there's a bit of an explanation there. Uh, and it, it says that as God's mercies are from everlasting to everlasting, so also the sons of your servants, they will, they will turn to the Lord, they will, they will follow the Lord, and, and, and they'll be provided for. Rather than getting into the, the whole text there, just to, to summarize, he's saying it's future generations of Israel. Here, Mitzudat Sion. 
again, these are major traditional rabbinic commentaries. Zera, Zera Yavdenu. And it, it says this, Kol b'nei Adam shema menim bo. All the children of mankind, all human beings who, who believe in them, refers to him as Zera, a future seed, as we're spoken of earlier in the psalm. And, and then Radak, Rabbi David Kimchi. A seed shall serve him. Still, there is a seed that shall serve him. That is the seed of Israel who serve him continually. So the point is that Isaiah 53, 10, you don't have to argue that it's metaphorical. Just a future generation. He will see future generations of Israel serving God. He will see future generations of Israel following him and recognizing him, whatever other qualifiers you want to put on it. He's going to die. He's going to rise from the dead. That's how he's going to enjoy long life, eternal life. Long life often associated with eternal life, length of days, multiplying days. And see seed, he will see future generations of Israel serving God. Boom, simple. You know, you don't need to rely on a perverse interpretation of Isaiah 57, four far and bizarre interpretation to argue from some other point. Just accept what the text says and go with it. Wow. Let's separate fact from fiction here and just go with what the Bible says. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I really want to encourage you to check out our 22-hour detailed course. It's called Countering the Counter Missionaries. It comes with this beautiful, in-depth study guide. And what we do here is we take you through the positive arguments that Jesus Yeshua is the Messiah of Israel. And then systematically, we go through all the major arguments of counter missionaries like Rabbi Tovia Singer. We show you where you're not getting the truth from them. We bring you back to the truth of scripture. We even deal with the rabbinic claim that there is an oral law going back in unbroken form all the way to Moses and Mount Sinai. And it's 22 hours, in fact, these days, you get it all just on one flash drive. So check this out. You'll find it to be so helpful, so life-giving, so edifying, and it'll help you to love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind as well.